let's get started. Heavenly Father, we thank you for bridging the gap. We have separated ourselves from you, and we don't deserve to be in your presence, and yet you sent your Son uh, to be there for us to be uh, for us what we could not be and to provide for us what we cannot provide for ourselves. And so we pray that you be with us now, send your Holy Spirit to work through your word and grant us increasing faith and and, and always an appreciation and an acknowledgement of your love. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Alright, uh, Genesis 28. <clears throat> Someone like to read? Starting in verse 10. <clears throat> Jacob left Beersheba and set out for Haran. When he reached a certain place, he stopped for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones there, he put it under his head and lay down to sleep. He had a dream in which he saw a stairway, stairway residing in, on the earth, resting on the earth, with its top reaching to heaven and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. There above it stood the Lord and he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land of which you are lying. <clears throat> your descendants will be like the dust of the earth and you will spread out to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to the, this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, Surely the Lord in, is in this place, and I was not aware of it. He was afraid and said, How awesome! this is this place this is none other than the house of God this is the gate of heaven <coughs> early the next morning Jacob took the stone he had placed under his head and set it up on a, as a up as a pillar and poured oil on top of it he called that place Bethel though the city used to be called Lutz Lutz then Jacob's made a vow saying if God will be with me and will watch over me on this journey I am taking and will give me food to eat and clothes to wear so that I return safely to my father's house, then the Lord will be my God. And this stone that I have set up as a pillar will be God's house and, all, and, all, and of all that you give me, I will give you a tenth. Mm. How oh, struck is weird that he was using a rock as a pillow. Yeah. So, I think people did that. Yeah, I mean, people were used to sleeping on the ground. They weren't used to all this kind of cushy stuff that we have. Yeah. I mean, and in fact, um, Jesus actually sort of mocked all the cushy stuff uh, when he says, when he's talking about John the Baptist, and he says, you know, you you go looking for somebody with, you know, that was in an, um, all. I forget his exact words, but it's sort of in fine linens or whatever, you know, and, and stuff like that. Oh, those people are in king's palaces, you know. And uh, so and there's, there's a few other places where it sort of describes that it's kind of soft, cushy kind of thing. I mean, you know, we, we're sitting in padded chairs, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and uh, Yeah, how come you don't have them unpadded? <laughs> <laughs> we sit on rocks. We could. <laughs> yeah, and it used to be in, in olden times <laughs> that only wealthy people even had chairs to sit on. I mean, if if you had one chair in the house and you had a guest, the chair let the guest got the chair. You so you would have been a millionaire back in that time. I right? probably would have. Just well, all of us think of all the chairs we had. We would have been considered. You even kings. threw them away. Well, yeah. That's right, right out there at the street. You did. That's right. <laughs> Never to be seen again. They actually took it too. Oh, yeah. I, I it think somebody joke. picked it up before the garbage was picked meeting, up. Well, I, I saw it all sitting out there the next day. The garbage was late that day. So. I don't know well, but I went by. 
I don't know where I was going and the garbage was still there and the chair it was gone. gone. Oh, uh-huh. okay. All right. Yeah. Well, good then. That happens a lot. <laughs> yeah, I would like somebody to get it. Okay. I was too lazy to take it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so what was the situation in Jacob's life at this point? What was going on with him? Only those of us who were here last week would be able to tell you. Yeah, we 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 might just keep that a secret, huh, Denise? All right. This is, you know, he's. I was with three sick grandchildren (laughs) for three days. Okay, well, he'd been bad, and he was on the run from his brother who wanted to kill him. Right. Yeah. So you know, you think about here, he. uh, He he tricked his his brother out of his birthright and all that kind of stuff. But he couldn't go home to claim it. <laughs> a lot of good that does me. <laughs> so yeah, I mean his his cunning had had backfired on him, and he lost everything. He's on the run, fearing for his life, and um, it was just it was not a good situation. All right, you ever felt like that? Like everything was against you. I've had bad days and good days. Okay. Yeah. I, I've never felt that everything was against me. I just haven't. Things were going smooth. That's all. Yeah, there were days I wish I would have stayed in bed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I, I don't, never had the feeling that everything was against me. Or everybody was against you. Maybe. Never kind of hit rock bottom. Mm. So I mean, it's great if you have it. It's not like you have to have. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I can't say that I really have either. There have definitely been sort of low spots. Mm-hmm. Um, and you've just come through your own or are going through it with the water. Yeah. And, you know, that's very distressing. Just one distressing. more thing I don't think I can handle. Mm-hmm. And, yet you'll, and yet you'll get through it. Yeah. And, and, and There's a lot of people worse than me. That's yeah. the way I look at it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, I, yeah, I've had times you just when I... move I've forward. No choice. That's no choice. Sometimes I just get upset with Larry and feel like I've had all I can take. <laughs> <laughs> Is there another, another honesty? I'm taking right notes there? here. <laughs> I forgot. It's okay. It's recorded. Who they got on the web? But I love him. I love him so. Hey, he's we never doubted yet. that for a There's minute. There's not a better man in the world. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's a saint. <laughs> he is. He really is. Saint Larry. I, I uh-huh. guess, too, that... I, oh, as we sit here and, and, and being believers and, and knowing Christ as our Savior, it's hard to get so totally down. I mean, we still have that joy under there, you know, even when we are just absolutely... You have that comfort. I think yes. Sometimes and you have to remind yourself. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. And, yeah. and, and the scripture that tells <coughs> us that the Spirit intercedes for us with size greater than words. I mean, that when we can't pray, we, we, if we remember the Holy Spirit is right there breathing that awful desperation we have to, to do it for us. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and, and I think you look at, at Jacob here, and, and he's not at that point, mm-hmm. you know. And um, I, I know there have been times where, <coughs> like, money was tight and the bills were coming in and I said what are we going to do you know and um, oh I've been in that situation before so and, boy. and mm. you know and, and those are those are really this sounds weird but those are really great times um, okay and and I say that because it's those times where you really remember that you know what I, I don't get through this life based on my own work my own um, efforts and, and my own resources. It's God that pulls me through. Uh-huh. But you yeah. know what? You remember that stuff, I think. I, I, we often talk. I remember when we didn't have a car and and uh, we only had one daughter. She was about five. And we rode our bicycles from Lakewood to Westgate to buy a Christmas gift. It was cold. Wow. And we found a, a, a life-size baby doll. <laughs> 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 for about a five-year-old, you know, so it was a pretty good-sized baby doll. 
and uh, we could afford it. And the only way to get it home was for me to put it on the bicycle <laughs> with me. And we rode from Westgate back to Lakewood, and we t we talk about that. We probably talked about that a hundred <laughs> times since it happened. <laughs> And the neighbors were saying, see, he's Everybody. cheating on his wife. <laughs> he's got a girlfriend on the bike. People would blow their horns and everything, you know. We didn't have any money. Oh, boy. That was funny. Yeah, yeah for me, it's it, when when things get that tight, it's it's usually my wife that reminds me. that, I mean, and she's she's really great that way. That it's, you know, well, God's gotten us through this far. That's right. You know, mm -hmm. and... Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> And usually it's, we've been in worse situations. Mm -hmm. know, yep. And we'll go back to church. Mm -hmm. so. Oh, yes, definitely. You're right there about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now you ride a bike to church, the bike's gone. No, I do it for fun. Then <laughs> I have a choice. Yeah. All right. So, um, okay. no, this probably appeared, um, this uh, staircase, or sometimes called a ladder, um, as a stairway or, or ziggurat. Uh, which were common in Mesopotamia, where the top would represent the place of a deity's presence or the worship connection <coughs> with that deity. All right, so you know, like the King James translates this the ladder, and we sort of get that expression of Jacob's ladder. Um, and uh, in fact, there's a uh, you ever go to like a, a science museum or something like that, you'll see this thing where it's it's two metal rods. That kind of that that go up <coughs> and they kind of spread out just a little further and further as as it goes up higher, and when they turn it on, the electricity goes, oh. zzz, and then it gets too far apart and it can't keep the arc anymore and it stops and then it starts over at the bottom and, and mm. it goes up. It's kind of cool to watch. Um, it's called a Jacob's ladder. <laughs> um, but uh, <clears throat> yeah, it was it was probably more like a you see these um, these sort of it's like a pyramid. But there's steps going up, and um, and probably that's what he was actually seeing. Um, and uh, you know we we don't know for sure. We just have this sort of staircase thing. But um, given the this sort of idea, and um, <clears throat> you notice that that God uses um, images that are familiar to people. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes. Even if they're images associated with, um, or, or, or terminology or things like that, that are sometimes associated with pagan worship. Yes. Um, I said he, he makes them his own. He mm -hmm. takes them. Yeah, yeah. And even like in the New Testament, this the first time I, I saw the original Greek, um, for most of the places where it's translated hell in the New Testament, uh, some of the newer translations um, keep the, the original word, and it says Hades. Which was the Greek name for the underworld, for the place of the dead, um, and and you go, well, why are they using that term? Because that was the that's uh, the Greek mythological place, you know. Well, it's not that they were saying that that's the place, but rather they were using a term that people were familiar with, um, so that and, and and actually a lot of modern translations translate like prison or something like that. Um, and the the idea is that 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 term is never used for heaven. Um, it's used for uh, uh, sort of a general place of the dead, but it's always negative. <laughs> uh, sort of like the, in Hebrew, the word sheol, which is sometimes translated grave or pit. Um, in some translations, it's just left sheol, um, and uh, in other places, it's translated hell. And you always have to kind of look at the context to see what it's referring to. Um, and uh, but it's 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 always negative. Um, whereas you have terms like paradise and heaven and, and things like that that refer to to being um, in God's presence after um, after you're no longer part of, of this world, and um, and so it draws the distinction. Or a lot of times Jesus would just say they're sleeping, hmm. and Saint Paul did too. So all right. Um, so what does the stairway to heaven represent? We actually studied it Wednesday in our John Bible class. That was oh. exactly the verses we were on. And we went back and looked at the Old Testament verse. Okay. Isn't that neat how these things overlap? 
Gee, how can th that be? <laughs> I don't understand it. You yeah. are always so thorough, too. You really are. I'm thorough? Thorough, yeah. Oh. And it's just so interesting. Because if you read that, a lot of those verses in John, and something I read said that some commentators think that Nathaniel had actually been sitting under a tree reading the old scriptures and was reading this, about this, about Jacob, and that Jesus knew what he was doing. And that's why he said, an Israelite, behold an Israelite, in 17, indeed in whom is no guile, because Jacob did have guile. And there's a scripture in the Old Testament that says he 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 did this with guile. He uses the same word. And then talked about truly, truly, I say to you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. So he, like you say, he connected that with what Nathaniel already had his mind on. So it's just so interesting, I'm telling you. Well, that would explain, that That was one that I've always sort of um, wondered about, because, because he says that. Out of the blue, apparently. Yeah, and, 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 and he's, yeah, it, 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 he sort of reacts. That he was he's astonished mm -hmm. by the statement, and and you know what? So you know, why why are you so shocked by that? You know, so. Um, okay, so what does the stairway represent? Christ. Yep, Jesus Christ. All right. So it's it's this connection. It's Jesus is a connection between God and man. Mm -hmm. uh, he's the the one mediator. And um, <coughs> that, that's that's just such a to to see Jesus as the mediator. It's when you when you look at other um, well, for for instance, uh, the reason that in um, in Roman Catholic theology, they say priests, all right, and we don't use the term priest um, to refer to mean pastor, okay. But that's not just like using old terms. They understand the priest as being the mediator between God and man. Whereas Luther came along and said, "Well, <clears throat> no, the Bible is speaks of the priesthood of all believers. Right. That we're all priests, and um, and that." And then there's also the the whole thing about praying to saints and things like that. And Jesus is the only mediator, and um, and and we don't need any other mediator. We can. He's the one that that makes that connection between us and God, and um, and so that's a that's a big um, you know, <clears throat> distinction between our two um, uh, systems of belief um, and and how we see things. All right. Um, why does God make this offer to Jacob? Well, maybe first we should look at what exactly is he offering? Protection um, and well-being. Okay. The land. The land. And, yes. All right. Many descendants. And all the, Yes. And in your descendants shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Uh, which is... Well, and he won't aid them. Yeah, we see just going to be this, with him. Yeah, this, and mm -hmm. so it's in a lot of ways it's a repetition of, of what he promised Abraham. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so it's saying that that's still in effect, and it's in effect for you. And... Um, and he also says, and I'm with you, I'll keep you wherever you go, I'll bring you back to this land, I will not leave you until I've done what I promised you. And which, by the way, that doesn't mean that, well, once once it's done, then I'm out of here. <laughs> you know, um, that that word until uh, can be, uh, it's it's not, it, you know, it's, it's sort of like, <clears throat> when Jesus said, "I'm behold, I'm with you to the end of the age," um, 
it's it's not that that he won't be with us after that, but um, <coughs> sort of through all of that. Um, so, I understand what he did, but I didn't understand why he did it. All right. Why did God? Why did God do it? I understand what he did. Okay. He did. So, why would God make that offer to Jacob? I don't know. That's a good question. Anyone want to take a stab? Maybe Jacob thought he had done something so bad that that wouldn't uh, apply to him. The promise wouldn't be. He wouldn't be considered one of um, Isaac's descendants. Okay. Because he had done a bad thing. Right, and certainly many people today would think that way. Oh, the church, that's for good people. <laughs> I mean, people think that. I'm I'm not a church person because <coughs> I I don't belong in a place like that because of the things that I've done. Um, and and sometimes. Uh, Churches will give that impression. Um, you know, maybe unintentionally, maybe intentionally sometimes. Right? They certainly shouldn't. You consider the kind of people that Jesus hung out with. Right? Um, but, you know, there's... Uh, I was talking to a guy who was a... Um, he was a pastor at a church that was the... Um, it was an old church. Uh, probably a hundred years old. And over the time that that church was there, the neighborhood had really, the property values had dropped and it had really gotten to be kind of the poor side of town. And here in the middle of this, this poor part of town is this beautiful old church. And all the people that attended that church came in from other parts of town or outside of town to come to this church. Nobody from the neighborhood attended that church. Hey boy, that's happening, isn't it? Believe them, it's happening a lot. Is it? Yeah. In the Catholic Church. Yeah. And, and and so he talked to him and said, boy, you know, we've got to do some outreach into this community. And the reaction that he got from a lot of the people was, if people from this community start coming to this church, I'm leaving. <laughs> wow. Well, they'd already <laughs> left the community. You know, <laughs> obviously they were fleeing. Yeah, so. yeah. So they, you know, they liked the building because it was this beautiful old building. They liked the things that happened inside of it, but those those people outside there, you know, they look funny or they. Um, they didn't belong there. They yeah. They, no. And, and the thing is, I mean, the people that are worshiping, they didn't no, belong there. No, they didn't. That's not a Christian thing. To no, do. no. <laughs> you just said wow. fine. Bye. <laughs> <Holy cow. laughs> you know, I mean, I mean that's awful. And who did Jesus come for? There's this great um, picture. I'll probably end up um, using it at some point um, as a like in a sermon PowerPoint. But it's a it's a picture of um, of Jesus sitting in a modern kitchen, um, uh, a sort of kind of a lower class modern kitchen um, you can you can see the you know the dish soap sitting there in the kind of older metal cabinets or whatever <coughs> and, and stuff and um, and there's this um, and, and there's a, a woman dressed like a prostitute clearly she's a prostitute washing his feet and so it's, it's that that story that we're familiar with but it's when you see it because like when you see the artwork it's it's been sort of cleaned up, it doesn't you know. Connect. And yeah, it's it's they're in robes and you know whatever and stuff. And here he's he's still wearing a robe in this picture. He's sort of like you'd picture Jesus, you know. But then she um, has on fishnet stuff. Yeah, yeah, you know she's she's dressed like you'd expect a prostitute to be dressed. Um, it's not uh, you know sort of a, a revealing R-rated sort of picture, but you just you see it and it's very jarring. You get the message. Huh? Yeah, and 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 it was sort of the the point of it was: Do you find this image offensive, right? And if you do, if if you have this sort of visceral reaction to that picture, 
then you understand what was going on when he did it, you know, because so many of our, the images that we have, um, the artwork and things like that have been cleaned up. And, um, and so we, we kind of miss that. Um, we, we don't really get that, that gut reaction the way that people would have at that time. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, so God makes this offer to Jacob. He's a, uh, he's the sort of person that would say, you know, I don't belong in church. Um, I, I have excluded myself from it, and and there's no way that I can go back. And um, and and what does what does God do? He he says, no, there's a there's a mediator. And it's not because Jacob deserved it. God's saying that's who I'm here for. Is the people that you know that are sinners. And um, you know, so if you if you just in, in, instead of a staircase, if you sort of fast forward to Jesus, and if you, and then if you kind of take that and bring it back, and you imagine Jesus coming to him, which is really what's happening here. Hmm. Jesus is coming to him and saying, "I'm going to be with you." Okay. You go, Why Jacob? Well, because that's who he came for. <laughs> and not only that, you look at what he's saying here is is you of all people not only did I come to save you but I am going to make you a blessing to others and Jacob was you know, he's going how is that possible and he said he would and he did it's odd that, <clears throat> that what he the things that he had done and, and I had to put myself in the last two weeks I didn't catch that <laughs> but it, that he would actually think that Think even even to the point of even having a dream like that, you know, because he thought he was so. So it must have been from God then. Well, I would think it would have to be. <laughs> yeah. It would have to be. Thinking. I think the dream was the other way around. I think the dream came from God, not from I Jacob. I do too. Right, right. I agree. Yeah. I agree with you. That's that's. So you, and you know, and we see here that Jacob's out of tricks. <clears throat> <laughs> Right? He's been tricking people his whole life. He's dug himself into a horribly deep hole and, and there's no way out. And God says, here's the stairway out. Okay, I got you now. Um, and, and, and I'll say that if, you know, if we really want to understand this um, uh, in, in our sort of modern sense, this should be an up escalator. <laughs> right. It only goes one way, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, because... <laughs> um, or if, if it's a downward escalator, it's God coming down to us. Okay. All right. Um, but it should be an escalator because we can't get to God by our own strength. You know, we can't even climb the steps. There's this um, there's this image that I've seen used on um, sort of little animation that's used on some websites and things um, to illustrate the gospel, and it, it sort of shows this this here's God and here's man and there's this chasm in between. All I've right? seen that before, right? and then this, not on the website. Okay, and then there's this cross that comes down and um, and, and forms the, the crossbar. The cross becomes a bridge so that you can go across. And uh, I said, you know, that's, that's a great illustration, except then you need <laughs> Jesus coming over and going, come here, and picking you up. And, and the wheelbarrow and taking yeah. you across. Yeah. yeah. Or, or to use a biblical image, Picking up and putting you over his shoulders, mm-hmm. you know, and, and carrying you across. All right, um, all right. So, what does this dream mean to Jacob? That he's actually going to live. I mean, he's going to. It's, I would think it's life changing. Yeah, and, and clearly it was. Um, and, and we'll see that he's. And I think it's another time to get to know God better. <coughs> And have his belief and knowledge of him grow and be stronger, because probably up until now it's been his father's God. Mm-hmm. So now it's between God and Jacob. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, back when uh, when he stole the blessing, um, he said, you know, you where did? Your look. Yeah. He said, where did? Uh, where? Wow. How'd you get this so fast? And Jacob says. Oh, the Lord your God provided. Oh. And, uh, and and we, we talked about how it's sort of like when when people say, it's my parents' church. 
mm-hmm. even though they're still technically members. But they don't think of it as theirs anymore. Yeah, and in those situations, you also have to ask, well, why, why do you see that as your parents' church and not yours? Yeah, do you think that you've been a lo- away so long that you <coughs> can't come back? Or are you not interested in coming back? And why? You know, and those are questions that we need to ask. All right, so what does Jacob's dream mean to you? I have a problem putting my head down on a stone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm spoiled with pillows. <laughs> All right. That God thinks everyone is worth saving. No matter what. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I, I like to ask the question, who did Jesus die for? Right? And and who does God forgive? And the answer is everyone. Mm-hmm. All right? He forgives everyone. Now, some people reject that forgiveness. Mm-hmm. Okay? But that forgiveness, when Jesus died on the cross, forgiveness was given to everyone. All right? You don't have to jump through some kind of hoops to to receive that gift. And we always have to make sure that whatever we do, you never give that impression that you do. And and and, and it's easy to do. All right, it's it's something that I struggle with, with uh, you know, with confirmation class. Well, you got to memorize these things, and you got to do this and that, and and I mean, we've had some good long discussions in class where the the material kind of got set aside or, or or compressed a little bit, so we had time to talk about. You know, well, the stuff that we're doing is important, right? Um, and, and the assignments and, and all that kind of stuff. But the point of it is not so that you get some kind of points with God or something like that, but it's just to help get help you to get to know Him better. And um, so, so yeah, it's this. You know, there's things like that that we, um, you know, or for, or for that matter, this is something I've probably mentioned before. Um, you know, what do you? Okay, if if what, what if, uh, well, I, I use this as a as part of uh, illustration, sort of. What if um, uh, uh, two men walked into church Sunday morning holding hands and sat down next to each other and one put his arm around the other and, and clearly they were a couple, all right? Would we welcome them into our church? A lot of churches would not, all right? And while that it would probably make a lot of people feel uncomfortable, at the same time, did Jesus die for them? Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Right. And um, and so is you know are they welcome here? They certainly should be. Right. Do we do we want them to continue in a in a, a lifestyle that is not uh, um, what God wants for them? No, but at the same time, apparently they're not at that place, All right? And so often we expect people to act, um, well, to act like Christians when they may not be, you know, and, and we get a, all uptight about people um, that are in, involved in all kinds of immorality. But if they don't know Jesus, how can we expect them to act like they do? Because it's our faith that motivates us to live, or at least try to live, godly lives. Um, And Mm -hmm. it's because of the joy that's set before us. Until you've got that joy set before you, what's your motivation? At best, you know, there's there's natural law that's written on our hearts, Mm -hmm. right? But sin corrupts that, and so we don't always get it right. And it's important for us to understand. I understand that, but I hope it didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, and let me just say this. It doesn't matter who does it, because, um, I, um, you know, it's different if you walk in holding hands or whatever, you know. But uh, there w- was a couple, um, quite a few years ago, that... Um, Really, I don't think the guy could have been any closer to her unless, like, he was 
right on top of her, you know, and I'm thinking, okay, well, we all know you love each other, you know, but really back off, <laughs> you know, I mean, and it just, it made me feel uncomfortable, Sure. you know, and the first thing I think about is, I think there's something wrong because why do you feel it necessary to publicly display this anywhere? I don't care if you're in the park, the grocery store, the a restaurant. Mm -hmm. I don't want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, and and then too, who knows? Every single one of us that walk in the church door, the immorality that we have in ourselves, things that we aren't proud of. So. You know? Right, we don't have to do them, we just have to think it. Well, right, and we may do it too, and nobody knows. Uh, Maybe we're not holding hands well, with I don't confess to doing it, but I confess person. to thinking it. <laughs> True. Well, I, I think everybody. Yes, If you're absolutely. honest with yourself, that's mm -hmm. your ass, your whatever. Yeah. People, <laughs> people who live in glass houses. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. I definitely live in a glass house. <laughs> yeah. and like, you know, I mean, I wouldn't, but I just feel uncomfortable about oh, well, sure. yeah, I, I yeah. always like that holding hands is fine, or, you know, yeah. couples sit close to each other, but really not on top of each other. You just don't have to do that. <laughs> well, I often wonder what, if something like that happens, what are they trying to say? Why, why are they saying it? Well, you know, if they're not asking for help, why are they saying it? For different reasons sometimes, you know, and mm -hmm. all right, I'll, and I'll give you the example of while um, my wife's not comfortable with public displays of affection. And, well, we're um, all grateful for that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, at the I'll same time. I have to thank time, her for that. <laughs> all right, at, at the same time, um, I go out of my way to, um, to talk about how important she is to me. I realize right. you do. I, I, All right. Mm -hmm. I, I mention her often in, in sermons and things like that. All right. I do that deliberately. Mm -hmm. All right. Because of so many, you hear about so many pastors that end up in these sort of compromised situations and things like that. Oh, we know right? about that. You know about it. Okay. <laughs> okay. I go out of my way to do that. I have her stand next to me shaking hands, um, things like that, because I am making a very statement. Public I'm, statement I'm making a public statement that I'm happily married and I'm not looking for somebody else and and I'm not interested in anyone else All right. and so I'm very deliberate about doing that and we appreciate that too it's never made me feel uncomfortable <laughs> right. and you know and, and, I, and I don't get explicit about it you yeah. know <laughs> alright but I just you know I want people to know that I love my wife and, and that I plan on staying with her and, and fulfilling my marriage vows to her. You know, so, um, which is also why I try to keep the <coughs> um, the curtains open in here. You know, there's just little things like that. Never I thought like, of it. Sometimes, sometimes the sun's shining yeah. when they're yeah. just yeah. right. No choice. And, and, I, and I have to shut that. But I really try to make a point of at least leaving that one open. Mm -hmm. And that one's pretty much always open. Mm -hmm. um, and and the idea is that that way, no matter who's in here, anybody could walk by, all right, and um and and there's a decent chance that if somebody walks by, it's my own wife. And um, and 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 it's it's not because I don't trust myself. Um, but it's just to send a a, a message so that nobody even thinks that I might be looking else. I'm sure you in your position has to do that. I would think so. That, that to make certain that there's no doubts or, you know, I don't know what other words are, but mm -hmm. you don't even want to have a hint of anything. Right. And and it, what it also does is, if somebody would decide that they don't like me and they want to make my life miserable right. and accuse me, mm -hmm. all right, if someone would accuse me of that, I would hope that the way that I have expressed my devotion to my wife. Um, that the people would at least go, huh, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> Instead of going, oh yeah, I can totally see that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't doubt that. <laughs> I'd believe it more if it was a guy. <laughs> that kind of crap, you know? I know. I know but, but honestly, we've been through that. We know what it's like and it's not fun. Excuse me. All right. Um, 
why is it sig- why was it significant that God would go with Jacob? And he says in verse 15, Behold, I am with you. I will keep you wherever you go. I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. He, I guess he wants to make sure he knows that he's going to keep up, live up to his promise. He doesn't have to worry about that. To separate him from all the other gods that people believed in who, I don't know if temporary is not the right word, but... Um, you mean it was going on at this time? No. Territorial. No. Yeah, yeah, territorial. Uh, yeah. Oh. That, yeah. And, you know, and the, the true God is with you wherever you are. Right. Ooh. Not that just was, on the stone. Yeah. Right. This was a huge thing. All right. It's something we take for granted. Right. But they believed that gods were localized. Mm-hmm. That you oh. had you had the god of, of you know, that that oh well Yahweh, he was the god of Mount Sinai. And the further away you get from Mount mm-hmm. Sinai, the less powerful he is. Or and he's only gonna go so far mm-hmm. because he's not gonna go outside of his sort of territory of influence. Mm-hmm. Um you know, and then, and, and, you know, they saw it's different places. And in fact, even when you hear about, you know, they talk about Baal, all mm-hmm. right? Um, Baal is sort of a generic term. It's almost like we would say God, all right? But it was, it was like, um, it's just the word that means Lord. And um, it's never used of the true God. Um, but you'd have Baal of this place and Baal of that place and, and stuff like that. And they were all kind of similar they were all worshipped sort of the same way and and they were all seen kind of about the same and I mean and, and it was really sort of their understanding just their their sort of worldview is very different <coughs> from ours because you could have different um, different religions where they all saw their God as being um, not only the the God of their place but even the creator of of uh, of their land, the creator of earth, whatever. And they'd have like these different creation stories in different places, and they didn't see any problem with the fact that the stories contradicted each other. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was like, well, that's how God created the earth to them, and this is how God created the earth to us, and and, and it wasn't a problem. And we go, what? <laughs> how can, you know, you can't have both. It, it's got to be one of the, and, and what? They didn't see that. That's a Western way of thinking, and um, so that wasn't a problem to them. But you're okay. I'm okay. Yeah, yeah, and and yeah. So <clears throat> it, it wasn't. Why can't we all just get along, though? It was. So we'll conquer you. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say that I think that led to a lot of conflicts. Yeah, yeah but the, the conflicts. Say. I mean, really. We're not so much about let's show how powerful our God is. It's <laughs> let's hope our God's more powerful than theirs. <laughs> well, we're just as bad in Christianity, you know. In the world wars, we all pray to the same God the night before battle. You know, you know I, yeah. I, I remember when I was a kid hearing, um, I, I was in the car and the radio was on and the news was on, and I heard these words, rival Christian forces. <laughs> and it was talking about these these two and I I couldn't tell you today who these groups were or anything like that. Oh, in right? Ireland. But it, it could be. I, th- I, th- I think it was in the Middle East somewhere. But it, but yeah, if you go to Ireland, you know, you see it there. And that where where you've got Christians fighting against Christians. And and you know we're bad enough in this country the way that that we attack each other. And we'll even. Well, and we don't need to go even go outside of our own denomination. No, no, no. <laughs> you know, we'll we'll just you Lutherans know. Lutherans fought Lutherans in the Second World War. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> uh, you've got, for, for that matter, you know, we can, we'll crab about the church down the street. You know, mm-hmm. I, I've heard of, I've heard of churches where the pastor has preached a sermon, basically deriding the next church down the street that was <laughs> of the same denomination. I mean, it was like like you'd have a, a a sermon on the evils of contemporary worship or something like that, where he would name names, you know, and and it, what are you doing? You I'll know? tell you what, we 
it wasn't that long ago where we had the pastor were pretty teed off about that happening in Ridgeville, wasn't sure. it? Sure. Yeah. Right. But I I know a pastor that uh, just recently, uh, within the past year or two, um, wrote a, his newsletter article um, was uh, calling on the next LCMS church down the road to repent oh for really? having contemporary worship. Oh my. And it's That's crazy. Why don't you just go do ministry? There's people going to hell and you're worried about what kind of instruments they're using in their service. That's nuts. <laughs> so I just I, I heard that and it just I, I wasn't in a position to you know, I, I I heard about it and I just thought, Oh, I hope the circuit counselor or the district president has talked to this guy and he was kinda young and inexperienced and uh, somebody's gotta set this guy straight. <laughs> But uh, it, I was kind of appalled because um, uh, some members of that congregation are that I heard it from are near and dear to me, and I—he's a good pastor. He's just—he was just misled. Yeah, he'll do better. He'll he's, be fine. I, you know, usually he needs to change his focus once they're out of seminary for a little while and realize that things aren't like they hear from their and usually that stuff comes from their classmates not their professors <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, some of us are fortunate enough not to make such public mistakes <laughs> <laughs> we can hope <laughs> well you know it's, you know and that's a tr I mean pastors are human beings yeah, yes I know yeah. I know and yeah. you know and, and nobody's I've, perfect I've, I've certainly said and done things that you know that I've gotten feedback on and, and there's things where I've, I've taken very strong stands on things and and then after a while went hmm yeah maybe I shouldn't have been so outspoken about that <laughs> so but that is one thing I love about being in the Christian church is we're all about forgiveness that's right <laughs> all right um and God doesn't you know I I I often remember, and I think it came from Sunday school. I don't mean to interrupt you, but no, that's fine. I think about it all the time, and it's it's just a little thing that I think I'm not sure. You probably everybody probably knows all about it, and and I'm thinking that I know something different, but I, I probably think about it two or three times a month. And it was a, a Sunday school teacher years and years ago told me about, and we were talking about forgiveness and things like that. I remember that, and I remember that she said that there was a guy that, that, and I don't remember what he did, I can't remember, I think he was a, a drunk or something, I think, it's some kind of person like that, something serious, and that he he went to church and prayed that he could stop uh, his habit, whatever it was, maybe it was smoking, I don't remember, and uh, and God, he said God forgave him, and the next week he come back and he says, uh, I did it again. He says, I, whatever it was, I, I did it again. And God forgave him again. And he did it again. The third week he came back and, and uh, he says, and he's praying and God, and he said to God, he says, I can't help it, I did it again. And God said, did what? Mm -hmm. I think that's cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've heard something similar like that. I, I'm sure, it, and, yeah. But but I've it, never heard that. I think it's really neat. Mm -hmm. Fairly recently, but yeah. Yeah, God... There's this um, I mean, there's a song that I really like. It's um, called "How Do You Do That," and it, and it talks about how you know God created the universe and 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 did all this stuff. And okay, I can I can kind of wrap my head around that, all right. But how can the God who knows everything forget my sin? How do you do that? You know, and I don't know, but He does, and so I'm good. <laughs> I'm good with that. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna argue with Him. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so, what is Jacob's reaction to all this? Sort of was like his epiphany. Opened up his eyes. Yeah. Wow. Really? Mm -hmm. Well, he promises to get back. God will be with me and keep me in this journey that I take. To give me food to eat and garments to wear. And I return to my father's house in safety, then the Lord will be my God. And the stone which I have set up as a pillar will be God's house, and of that you give me, I will surely give a tenth to you. 
right? And he also set up this pillar and anointed it with oil. So that's the thing, this rock that he was sleeping on, it wasn't just like a little rock, okay? These pillars were, hmm. were people had set hmm. up a, a, a pillar of remembrance. And we see this sort of throughout the Old Testament. You see these where they set up this pillar. Um, and, and, and these pillars, the idea is that, that when people come here, they'll see this pillar standing here, and they will know that something significant happened here. Even if they don't know the details of it, they'll say there's something special about this place. Something very special happened here. And, um, you know, and, and you sort of, hopefully word will spread so they'll know what happened here because they didn't have, you know, sort of bronze plaques like mm -hmm. we do nowadays, you know, historical marker kind of thing. But it was that same sort of thing. This is a historical marker. Something they could have taken a hammer and a chisel like they do when they do the headstones at the mm. grave sites? I, I suppose they could have. <laughs> <laughs> the name he was. just didn't have one on him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He had a little yeah, yeah, in a hurry. That's really weird. I'm telling all these weird stories tonight. But <clears throat> I went on a fishing trip to Canada about to 15 years ago. And we stayed on an Indian reservation. And we were in a place where you had to carry in your own water. I mean, there was nothing there. And we were on this lake. And as you're out fishing on the lake, we would see these things. And what they were was a pile of stones about this high. And that's all it was. It'd be, you'd be in the middle of, you'd have to get an airplane or a boat to get into there, and it'd be this pile of stones. And you'd go a couple more miles down, you'd fish all, you look up in the bank, there's another pile of those stones. It was really, really weird. Well, the camp was run by Indians. We were on a reservation, <coughs> so we got, it got to the point we asked that evening what it was. And it has to do with the young men, and the, when they are accepted into the tribe, they go out into the wilderness as far mm. as they can go. Mm. And when they accept their God, they build this little, I can't remember what they called it. And that stayed there, and that meant something to them, that, that it was a safe place, that, that uh, you could come there, and nobody was going to harm you, or anything like that. Mm. It was, it's strange mm. that it was... And there's, you know what was really strange, there's one on Chestnut Ridge Road in, in a guy's yard. And every time I see it, I'm thinking, is that an accident or is it, is it really what I saw? Because it's a little pile of stone. Seriously, it looked like a little pyramid about this high. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, so I made my own. I took my, my thermos and I put it on a couple of rocks and took a picture of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting that they would, you know, that's a, that. a, a religion that doesn't, they, I don't know, crosses cross over somehow? I don't know. Well, you know, people use Marxist things like that, you know, for different things. Um, Native American religion is pretty different from ours. Mm -hmm. um, with them, it's more of sort of getting the gods to do what you want them to do. Um, which, when, when Christians go in and start talking about us serving God... Um, they say which one? Well, not only that, because some of them are sort of, they, they'll sort of talk about the Great Spirit over all the others or something like that. Um, but but this whole idea of that we follow God and not try to get the gods to follow us, um, that's that's kind of alien to them. Okay. Because theirs is really about sort of taking control, um, whereas for us it's giving up control. And so, it's, it's, so missionaries um, have a really hard time uh, communicating that to them. Because it just runs completely contrary. It's Which, weird though that the rock thing would run between the two religions, and and you just wonder how much else. Yeah. Maybe it's planned. Maybe it's not an accident. Well, you know, the other thing is that, um, I mean, and a lot of that was was cultural. But you know, rocks make pretty good markers because yeah. especially if it's a big enough one or a big pile of them or something, that's not going to blow away real easily. Yeah. You know, um, but you know, we also see things where. Uh, especially where you go back to kind of Noah and, and stuff like that, that um, you have these these very similar stories, mm. like every culture has a flood story. You know, well, why is that? Well, because they all shared that before people sort of split up all over the place. Yeah. You know, and they took that stuff with them. And over time, um, you know, we've, we've got the real story because God preserved it in, in the Bible. But, you know, other places they've... You can see where they've sort of they had the story, but the details got fuzzy after a while. Um. <clears throat> now I have a question mm -hmm. yep. in twenty, verse twenty, 20. starting, and I 
it sounds like Jacob is bargaining with God unless he's it's some kind of a statement but anyway Jacob made a vow saying if God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go and will give me bread to eat and clothing to wear so that I come again to my father's in peace house in peace then the Lord shall be my God if you do these things for me God then you'll be my God or else it means I, I know took he's, it the opposite way. How did you? Uh, that's uh, how did exactly you take the opposite. I I took it as him saying, "Wow, if You're he good. can forgive me, that kind of a thing." Okay. Right. Does that make sense to you? Yes, know. it does. Okay. Oh, well, that's interesting because I took it more the way Anna Marie did. Really. The, the sort of a um, sort of a, well, okay, but it is sort of like he's sort of like leaning in that direction, you know. But but he's he's saying, are you sure? Let's tell you what. Little, um, if I just you know I, I I've had this dream and that, but you know people dream weird things and and so uh, although at that time people put a lot more significance on dreams than we do today, um, and uh, and and so God if. You know, just show me, give me, give me a, a a very clear, definite sign. You know that I can be sure of. And, and like I, the guy in the lifeboat. If I live, I'll be <laughs> that kind of a thing. Yeah, I, that's well, weird. That's I see, it, yeah, I took it the way Bud did, but I, now that you said that, oh. I I can see that as well. But mine was like mine was he felt if this God feels I am worthy of. You know, and yeah, you saying better than I yeah, said but it, but that's where I felt. Yeah, I see that other. Okay, so who's right? Which way are you supposed to interpret it? I think it can be interpreted both ways. Mm, yeah, yeah, I really <laughs> do. As, as Larry will say, I feel strongly both ways. <laughs> I, I get, I get that. You won't be able to sleep tonight, will no, you? No, no, I won't. Oh my goodness! It's, uh, now I have to go back to the weird <laughs> thing about my shoulder. Now I have to do that in no. this case. No. When I was lying there at night and I've had this shoulder bother me for two years and it hurts the elbow and hurts my wrist, I'm laying there in the bed at night and never once in two years had I ever prayed that that shoulder would stop hurting. And all of a sudden it comes into my head, pray. And I thought, well that's, no. And I said, well God, do you, do you want me to pray that? And it was like, yeah. <laughs> and I prayed that, and I want to tell you it was instant. Instant. And I thought, okay, this is a coincidence. <laughs> you just wait till tomorrow night. <laughs> it has never hurt me since. Wow. So it's like... Jacob has seen this ladder in his dream. He knows it's from God. My knee is going on my prayers tonight. Yeah, I'm I don't know for how all my arthritis. I all don't over know. My body. I don't know what to tell you. Then. And if no, it doesn't you, work, I'm going to blame it on you. Let Anna Marie finish, because you. Oh, I'm done. sorry. <laughs> but, but what I was going to say was, this is like Jacob sees this and he goes, "Okay, it's like he halfway is believing." It's not possible, and on the other half, it's this is God, and so it's it's almost saying He is with me and He will keep me. It's like He's it is both. Right. Who initiates all of this? Well, God does. God, all right. God's already told him that He's going to be with him. And God already told right. me he heal my shoulder. Right. See, and now there's the difference. Okay. Now I'm not saying you shouldn't pray for healing. So you should. You have to say that will be done. But sometimes God is going to say, you know, and suffer. <laughs> well, sometimes. All right. Suffer. But <laughs> but uh, I mean, but other times. Nobody said this was going to be a picnic. Yeah. <laughs> other times God may say, pray for healing. Well, Just trust me on this one. If if you if you if you if I told you the rest of because. <laughs> Your other shoulder started. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, kind of. I got this. I did something. I don't remember what I did. And I did in my left shoulder. <laughs> Later, 
a month or so later, maybe two, three months. He moved, he moved it from one he side may to have, the other. But it But he it did was. stop that shoulder. It was actually it wasn't my shoulder, it was my back. Oh. <laughs> and I never had back pain like that. I don't have back pain. I never had back pain. It was so bad I could hardly move. And I thought, what is this? And and I thought, you don't want me to pray for that about this, do you? And it's, I don't know, it was weird. And I did. And it went away. <laughs> like that. Except I have one sore spot, like, remember. Because I never, I don't remember, I only remember one other time ever praying about something that was, I was physically ill and I prayed about. And that was years ago. And I don't know if I remember that God told me to pray for it. I feel like he did. Let me ask you a question then. How many times have you prayed for other people's illness? Oh, a lot. See, isn't that I was something? praying for Eileen Hatfield about her breathing when God told me about my shoulder. And I thought, well, maybe he means if he heals my shoulder, it means he's healed Eileen from her breathing things, but she still has problems. Oh. So I don't know what that was about. You know, and, and God has reasons for granting that sort of miraculous healing, and, and he's got reasons for not granting it. Yes, I fully you know. believe that. And But at the same time, if God says to you in some way, hey, this is my plan for you, pray for it, you know, um, and, and which is really just saying, believe that I can do that for you. And that makes me nervous because if he has done this, what is he going to do where I'm going to have to use my faith <laughs> and be strong? If you, if you ever get a chance to watch the movie Faith Like uh, Potatoes, Faith Like Potatoes, no, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's actually one of the movies that we have in our, um, our group of, of DVDs to give away, hmm. um, and, but it's, about a, it's a true story um, about a, a guy who... Um, Basically, I think the way it explains it is it, um, it's about a man that, that decided to take God at his word. And um, that, and there were times where, where God basically said, just, you know, do this, and it sounds crazy, but do it. And he went, okay. <laughs> and he did, and, and miraculous things happened. And, you know, does that mean that, that everybody can do that? No, it's, it's not that God sort of, you know, zaps you but he's going to use people um in in different situations and he's going to he's going to affect us in different ways and and for some people we need that healing and um and god's going to use that healing he's going to he's going to give it and, and he's going to do great amazing things with it and for other people we need that suffering you know i mean you look at saint paul that he prayed that god would mm -hmm. remove the thorn in his mm -hmm. flesh all right and god said no no, my power is made perfect in weakness. And, um, and and so different people need different things. But don't you think that the mere fact that we are Christians leads us to, I don't know how to say this, but that we're more empathetic to other people than we are to ourselves? Doesn't the, the t mm -hmm. type of person that is a Christian, don't you think that type of a person thinks more of other people than, them, than themselves. Sure, and sure. has a tendency not to do look, that. Look at our prayer list. How many of those people on that prayer list are people that ask to be added themselves? Yeah. All right? Mm -hmm. We've got, I think the secretaries have a contact list of, of who all the people are, um, who the contact people are for all of those prayers to so they can check in with them every once in a while to make sure to keep them on the list. All right? <laughs> well, there's a reason we've got contact people for all of those. Because very few are, are people that specifically said, please put me on the list. Mm -hmm. right? At the same time, it's okay to put yourself on the list. Yeah. And I know, and I do that too. And, and it seems like when, when, when my name really should be, it's usually Greg that, that says, um, uh, Pastor, put yourself on the list. You know? <laughs> and, uh, um, you know, and, and he's great about that, and I appreciate that. But, you know, I, I'm, I, I get... Even when you know when I'm using like a, a 
uh, suggested prayers for the the week, um, and and it's got you know praying for pastors and things like that. I'm I'm always if it's kind of long, that's usually the first one, the, the first paragraph, you know, petition that I remove, um, just because I I was kind of have the attitude, well, these other people are a lot more important than me. Um, and I always check it to make sure that it says like, well, pray that the pastor will be faithful. Or, that, I think know. that's a Christian attitude. In I a think. sense, it is, but at the same time, we need to we need to be careful that we don't end up being like Jacob and say he's he's your God, he's he's there for you, yeah, and to and forget that he's there for me too. Yeah, um, but maybe we we maybe I think we have a, I think we have a tendency to to be a little. Um, careful with what we ask for that we only ask for mm -hmm. the important things and typically mm -hmm. I think there are other people I yeah. think we ask for other people yeah. more than you know we can ask for little things too I think mm -hmm. we should I, I I never thought of it that way yeah yeah God is the you know he's the God that's um, he's he's in the nitty-gritty with us you know and uh, so so we can ask him for big things and ask him for little things James says the important thing isn't the size of the of the request, but that you believe that God's going to keep His promise to you. Mm -hmm. And if you don't believe that He's going to answer your prayer, then why do you bother praying? Um, <clears throat> just a couple things we're running um, I'm sorry. late. Oh, it's, <laughs> I get the tendency um, to get. That's oh, fine. Uh, I, but I just wanted to hit these real quick. Um, what made the place special? God appeared. God was there. <laughs> All right. All right. This is important for Christians. This is important for churches. All right. It's important for Christians. What makes a place special? God is there. All right. When we look at at Moses in the burning bush, and God says, "Take off your sandals because it's holy ground." Why was it holy ground? Because God was there. There's nothing special about the ground itself. All right. It's because of God's presence there. Mm -hmm. All right. For our church building, why is that a special place? Because on a God, regular a basis, building, right? yeah, right, it's just a building, all right? But on a regular basis, God is there speaking through his word. Yes. All right? And when we, when, when we proclaim the gospel and, and, and we gather and, and, and pray to him and, and that, God has promised to, that he's there, all right? And so, so that's a special place. But it's only a special place when God is there. Now we've set it aside for that specific purpose to glorify God, but we always have to ask, you know, when we say sort of what's appropriate to do in that building and what's not appropriate to do in that building, all right? And the question is, all right, this has been set aside for the glory of God, and, and so we just have to ask, is this glorifying God, all right? And um, and and whatever we do there, it should be to glorify God because we've set it aside for that purpose, okay. all right? Um, but it's not that it's somehow holy ground or, or something like that when when um, when God's word is not being proclaimed there or um, you know or that the people aren't gathered around his word or in prayer um, and and for Christians too all right guess what we're all holy ground because God lives in us oh that's true yeah. through our baptism all right we are holy ground because he is there with us. So you could, you know... We sometimes forget that, don't we? Yeah. See, so you, you know, you talk about your, your little pillar that yeah. you made, you know? Right? Well, well, I was just joking around. No, no, I know, I know. But, I mean, seriously, you could, like, wear a pillar on your head. Something <laughs> something really significant happened here. Yeah. You know? So I, I'm not really recommending big rocks sticking out of but, you know. <laughs> That's why he's got the big cheese thing. Thing <laughs> it should be rock colored, though. Then. I would think so. All right, and last, what's Jacob's motivation for the tithe in in twenty eight twenty two? Um, of uh, of all that you give me, I will surely give a tenth to you. Yes, he's thankful. Mm -hmm. Did God command him to do that? Don't see anywhere where it said that. No. At least not there. No. Is that how tithing came about from, well, from Genesis? There, and, and then you've got, it, it becomes more significant in the, um, 
when you get to like the Old Testament laws about sacrifices and all that kind of stuff, and then and tithing is, is there that ten percent. Um, but uh, really, it, it yeah you early on, and I, I think it's already there's already been another mention of it somewhere. It's seen as this sort of um, you know this is a it, it's always seen as sort of the minimum of um, this is this is the minimum of of what you'll give back to God to acknowledge that all that you have is His. Um, or another way they would do it is, uh, instead of a tenth, it would be a twelfth, I think, um, because it was the first month, of the, the first harvest of the year, um, or, the, or the first month or, or whatever, um, you, you would give that whole one to God. The whole thing. And, and then... Um, and then, and so it was. That's where the idea of first fruits giving uh, came from. The first fruits of the land, uh, your whole first harvest, you give to God, and you say, "I'm giving this to you, God, because it's yours, and I trust that you're going to provide for me the rest of the year." Mm. So imagine if you're like, you know, January or, or whatever your sort of fiscal calendar is, that you give a whole month. Yeah, no, it's a little tougher with us with sort of monthly bills and auto pays and all that kind of stuff. You can't necessarily do that, but. Um, but yeah, that, that was kind of the idea is that, that you say, God, here, you're going to take care of me and I trust you. And if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have this. Right. <laughs> kind of. Exactly. exactly. And, and so it's, it's, it's an expression of trust. Um, it's an expression of, of rejoicing and thankfulness for the blessings God has given to us. And, um, but yeah, was, the 10% was always sort of seen as the minimum. And, and sort of typically in the Christian church, we tend to go, oh, 10%, yeah. I, I, I got it. I, I, I did my, you know, my 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 duty, you know. And then you get into, well, 10% off the net or the gross, you know. And uh, what about the, <laughs> you know, and you get, you know, really, you can get really nitpicky about it, you know. And, and if you're doing that, you're missing the point, you know. And then it's, is it? Does that mean because I belong to Shepherd of the Ridge, a ten percent goes to Shepherd of the Ridge, or does that include all the other stuff I do? What? Yeah. What about the other? You know. What everything I do. Yeah. Does everything I do? Uh, and, and and you know that was that was actually that's a discussion that I'm having right now with my wife that that there's some other sort of um it's, it's pretty small but it's a little bit of side income um that that we have and um. <clears throat> just on some hobby stuff that we do and, and, and I said what should we do with this I, I want to I want to tithe on this and, and mm -hmm. um, should we just like add this to our church tithe or, or should we um, are there some other charities or or, or or people that we know who are in need or and I believe know? that incidentally I, I, yeah. I don't think it's directed to, I mean no shepherd the ridge was going to be here you know it's mm -hmm. so you just give back Right, and, and and you know that's that's something you pray about. Mm -hmm. and, and I have. Mm -hmm. and, and God, what do you want me to do with this? Um, but it, you know, and, and it, but it's really you, you know, you look at Jacob, and, and it's not God. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you this money sort of as a um, to pay you to be my bodyguard. You know. Yeah. It's it's Took God. Yeah, yeah. It's God. You've you have blessed me and. Um, and, and I'm going to trust you, and and so because you have done this for me, I'm I'm going to give this to you, and so uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other comments? Very interesting. I'm glad I came. <laughs> All right. Let's close the prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the blessings you give to us. We don't deserve any of them. We don't even deserve to be able to call you our God. And yet you have called us your own people. You've called us your children. So that we can not just call you our God, we can call you our Father. And what a tremendous blessing, what a what a tremendous honor that is. And, and we can never deserve that, but we thank you for it. We thank you for forgiving our sins, for sending your Son to die for us. And we pray that that, 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 that knowledge, that, that faith, that trust that you have given to us to, to know you, may reflect in all that we say, do, and think. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Oh, oh my.